Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. This webinar is brought to you by Atara Solutions. My name is Grace Nzula. I am a trainer and HR consultant with Atara Solutions and a manager at Vanessa Training Institute. Uh, Tara Solutions is an HR consulting and training company that provides total HR uh, solutions to employers and employees. We also provide training services in HR, sales, and soft skills. For more information, kindly email us on info at atarasolutions.co.ke. Get It Right with Atara Solutions is a platform that seeks to demystify issues in entrepreneurship and employment. We do this in partnership with Zalego Academy, a software development and capacity building academy. If you're looking to polish your IT skills or just gain new skills, kindly talk to Zalego Academy. If you're looking to develop softwares, for example, for those in HR, they have a very, very nice HRIS. For those in finance, they have a very, very good um, uh, petty cash um, management uh, platform. For those in training, they have a very, very nice LMS. So please get in touch with the uh, Zalego Academy, you can email them through eric at zalego.com and he will be in touch. I mean, he let you know more about uh, what they are offering, but you can also visit their social media pages. So, and it's been an awesome, awesome end of year. I mean, October, we had quite a number of people uh, win some giveaways, and this is becoming a trend. So, keep tuning in because the next time it might be you. Congratulations to Donna Karaoke who won a cake from Capricio Pastries. And it happens that uh, November is her birthday month. So the delivery is waiting for next weekend when uh, she turns, I don't know how old, on Sunday. So we are very excited for you and happy birthday in advance, Donna. Uh, congratulations to Catherine and Charity who won giveaways from Good, Good Fortune Greens. Catherine and Charity, kindly get in touch with me. I, I need to make a delivery for you guys. Mr. Joseph Ponjiro, who won a gift hamper from Soilex. Yeah, you remember our speaker last week was um, Jai. Jai uh, runs a company called Soilex Prosov Limited. They deal in um, uh, detergents and your total cleaning solutions. If you're looking for machines, um, uh, dispensers for your sanitizers, um, tissue holders, among others. So can speak to Soilex and Joseph and Jiro want to give Tampa from them. And we still have some giveaways today from Soilex, so stay tuned. Whitney Joy and Lois Mongai won an offer from Sorel Laundry in Ruaka. They provide, top, I mean, same day uh, cleaning services for your duvets, your clothes, among other things. So Whitney Joy, I'm still waiting for you to get in touch with me. I know Lois Mongai, the team from Sorel has gotten in touch with you and the cleaning is happening. Regina Mutuko, who won a gift hamper from Tanu's Kitchen, and Kabara Jane, who won a gift hamper from Pal Radio. Kabara has still not gotten in touch with me. I need to figure out how to reach you, Mama. Um, Ivan Skiprotich and Joseph Karome, who won a gift hamper from Balcon Housing. I know Joseph Karome is planning for a pickup of his delivery, and we're going to send uh, for Ivan's, who is in Akuru. So Whitney Joy and Kabara Jane, kindly get in touch with me. We continue to celebrate life and therefore the giveaways are still up for grabs. Our partners in November are Serenity Studios who, ha who, are pro uh, who have been producing our videos and, and photos. You can check them out on Instagram and Facebook. I love, love, love their expectant mom packages. They actually even give you a, a, a book, a picture book, which is very, very nice and professionally done. So you can contact them. Uh, they are doing an awesome, awesome job for your wedding, um, uh, mommy pictures, uh, family shootout, I mean, photo shoot, ETC. We have Pal Radio 96.9 FM in Nairobi. I had a nice time there last Thursday. Um, you can also check them out on YouTube, on Facebook, and you can stream live from their website. That is Pal Radio 96.9 FM in Nairobi. Good Fortune Greens, a green grocery shop in Nanyuki, who have offered a grocery uh, basket, and uh, Catherine and Charity won that last week. So get in touch with me so that we can make that delivery. We have JC Beauty, who is offering natural hair and beauty products. I am so excited. She has a new line, uh, which is JC Beauty. Uh, so she's really working on packaging. I love her taste in the bottles. Oh my God. And then we have Wild International who have offered a free scalarizer class. 
Scleriser is a flagship program developed for over the last 15 years, enabling entrepreneurs to identify the principles of becoming profitable in business. This program is delivered with three, within three months, block, broken down into four sessions. So if you need to, uh, if you're figuring out how to run your business better, if you want to up your game, if you want to make more profit, if you want to style up in business, and if you are also a startup, probably three to five years, and you're still not sure what you're doing, please get in touch with Wild International. Uh, they, their CEO was one of our speakers a while back. And this is a, a, a program you can't afford to miss. So, and then we have Balcon Housing, who is a real estate company. They're in the business of buying and selling land and real estate management based in Nairobi. And finally, we have Capricio Pastries, who run a cake shop. And you can check them out on Instagram at Capri Capricio underscore T underscore. So tonight, as promised, some of you will walk away with uh, giveaways from Soilex and we will see who, what else we can offer you. So this is our 22nd webinar. Oh my God, how time has flown. It is already, um, on, we are already on the 22nd episode. We started with how to register your business legally. And last week we were looking at family owned businesses, whether you work for or with your father. Uh, so you can check all our previous episodes on Atara Solutions YouTube channel. Please uh, subscribe and leave a comment. Atara Solutions is A-T-A-R-A-H Solutions and with an S. So you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, next week, we shall be discussing change. Now today we are covering stagnation and probably a few things to do with how to unlock. Now next week it is literally now managing through. And then we are going to expound, uh, I mean, look at more about the change in terms of uh, what has been brought about by COVID, the new normal. So please stay tuned uh, for that next week. We have a very awesome speaker. As always, let me remind you why Get It Right with the Tara Solutions started. Did you know that 22% know that of businesses fail in the first year, 30 in the second year, 50 in the fifth year, and 70% don't see their 10th anniversary. And we hope that you are not going to be part of these statistics. And that's why we are taking the time to mold you into a better entrepreneur and, and make sure that your employees are working for you and they know where to look. So, and the numbers have to change. And then I am honored to introduce our speaker of the day, Mr. Christopher Karani. He is a colleague. He's been in the uh, HR professional for over 15 years with experience both locally and internationally. So he's worked with FMCGs and NGOs. He is an all-rounded HR expert in HR business partnering, talent and organization development and HR services. He is the director at Workforce Africa. So he will take us through uh, the session today. I think he's very polished. We, we welcome you, our audience, to ask as many questions as possible. So Karani, do we call yes. you Chris or Karani? Chris is fine. Chris is fine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to say. Also, Atara Solutions has been nominated for the Laikipia Business Awards. I will be putting up the link for you to vote for us and uh, for the women in business. And we are looking forward to next week when the winners get to be announced. So please vote, 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 vote. We need to bring this back home. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes. Do we? Is there? Is it a rumor that careers get we we stagnate in careers and even especially with entrepreneurs? Is it possible that we just don't want to go on? We want to change. It's true. It's true. It's a reality. It happens. It happens a lot. It happens to most people actually. Um, mm -hmm. And it is a. It's almost. I, I almost feel like it's a stage because in my previous experience and the the interactions I've had with the, especially employees in this case, mm -hmm. it always gets to that point where you have to think about what is it that you want to do next. Yeah, yeah. Okay, please take us through. Help us learn. We are stuck yeah, on board. Sure, sure. So, I mean, so when you think about uh, when you think about career stagnation um, or even stagnation in business, so today I want to talk about it two ways. There are two different ways of it. So, one of the ways of stagnation 
is a career opportunities because of from a personal and organizational perspective career can stagnate because of personal perspectives in terms of maybe things to do with the self-efficacy whether i have challenges with my goals i have um, i'm able i'm not able to handle my attitude or or even maybe i'm not able to decide between one career or the other so that's one perspective the other perspective is as a result of organizational conditions. So maybe there's not a proper mentoring, organizations have scaled down, they're not making as much profit. So today, my focus really is most on the individual and interpersonal perspective, because mostly that is where we can actually control as individuals. And I will also try and focus, okay, just like Grace said, how are we going to, how can you actually unlock yourself? in that from that particular situation yeah so so first of all first things first so how do you tell whether your career has stagnated or not yeah one of the ways to look at it is do you have enough opportunity for learning so are you doing something that is growing you uh, mentally and professionally so is that happening or not uh, are there opportunities for growth say for instance are you working on new projects are you working on new uh, on new activities that can come up? What is it that you're actually doing that is helping you grow day by day? And then if it's, a, for instance, in an organizational setup, are there opportunities for promotions, for instance, or even salary increases? Because there are indications of your life is actually moving forward gradually. So what is it that then ideally you should do? So I have have um, some five points that I want to talk about and I would want us to almost by the time we are finishing the session to actually take away those particular points. So one of the ways to really unlock ourselves because I mean from from this session point of view the most important thing is for us to be able to pick out yes there is stagnation and all that uh, and we have our own situations that have led to the such uh, to such a stagnation situations but what exactly are you supposed to do to get yourself out of it? So my first point is lifelong learning and self-development. So we have had this a million times. So people are saying that you need to keep yourself up. You need to keep yourself learning, read a book. But I want to go a little bit further and say the first step is identify your goal. So why are you learning in the first place? And which areas are actually, uh, uh, which areas are you focusing on in terms of learning? So identify a goal. One of the ways that can really help you to identify this goal is talking to mentors or talking to people's in, people in the professional area, in that professional area, and asking these people uh, clarification questions. So then you can understand how, for instance, your career or that particular career, um, career path is progressing. Let me give an example. So if say, for instance, you are a finance person and you want to know, okay, so what do I learn? How do I want my career to grow? If you are to talk to someone, say, for instance, has been in the profession for some time, you probably, he'll give you perspectives of how is the finance industry changing? So in the next 10 years or so in this finance sector, how can that, how is that particular um, environment changing? So you focus your learning in those specific areas because at the end of the day the objective is to build capacity so that then you can be able to use that uh, knowledge and that capability for either self-employment basically just giving yourself opening up opportunities for yourself so that's that's part one of uh, that particular point the second point is <clears throat> how do you also start acquiring competencies on uh, skills that are going to make you more successful or more efficient. So let me talk about things like communication skills. Yeah, how do you, these skills like adaptability, skills like collaboration, yeah, skills like creativity. These are skills that um, are being considered, actually, if for the interviews that I have done, if you have two candidates that are at the same level in terms of a, no, the, the technical skills, you use the, these particular skills to actually assess who fits better into the organization, who is more creative in their role, who is going out of their, who will go out of their way to make sure that work is done, who will gel better with the team. So these skills, it is really important that you incorporate them in your learning journey. 
and an easier way of identifying because people ask me this question okay chris there's, there's a whole list of uh, a million soft skills that i can learn where do i actually start so the first point there are so many online for instance personality tests which are free that you can actually do and that will help you start to narrow down um on these soft skills that you that you can actually do that's that's a um, point one the second point um, in terms of unlocking yourself is really becoming tech savvy. So and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm already, I'm preaching to the converted people, but really technology is permeating everything that we are doing. We, in whichever profession, whether it is agriculture uh, or agribusiness rather, whether it is in uh, medicine, whether it is in finance, whether it is in human resources, Technology is going, is getting into that, into each and every specific area. So your role as an individual is to really sort of just trying to pick out, okay, how is technology going to change my specific profession or my specific career? And how can I start learning to actually complement uh, that technology with what I am doing? So it's really about being proactive and staying current with the technology changes and <clears throat> It's still riding on to the first point of identifying people that have significant exposure in your, in your skill area is to also plug those points in to say, okay, from a technology point of view, how do I expect to see, <clears throat> how do I expect to see my professional area changing and using that information to then starting to pick out areas that, areas that you, can, you can continue keeping yourself tech -side. In other instances, and we have seen, I've seen multiple instances as such, where people are actually, someone is actually shifting fully into a technology related area. Yeah, like for instance, when we do uh, interviews on uh, say for instance, programmers or people who know programming languages, you find quite a number of those people didn't necessarily go to campus to study a programming language, but they have changed careers. And they have really changed those careers because of the trends that they are actually seeing and uh, also the passion that then they want, that the passion of getting into a certain, into a certain sector and actually excelling in it. So as an overall point, we have to continue being technology savvy and plugging technology in everything that we do, right? So that's my second point. So the third point is about networking. So networking takes many shapes, yeah? So it is important to network for sure, yeah? But um, it's always better to network with somebody when you do not desperately need them. So if you really need somebody, uh, if you really, for instance, need someone to connect you to maybe a certain business opportunity or a certain job, <coughs> Reaching out to them at that particular point when you need them and ask them to, net, to, to connect with you is not as effective uh, as opposed to if you had reached out earlier. So, because you don't know when the, those opportunities are going to come and you don't know when you're going to need these people, the best uh, time to network is now. Yeah. So, develop professional relationships because these relationships are built over time. And it's really about mutual interest and trust. So as you are approaching any networking connection, um, how do, will you establish mutual interest? And how will you establish uh, trust? Yeah. So some relationships obviously are a senior and junior, which is OK, especially in maybe like mentorship or coaching uh, relationships. Others are more peer relationships. So, but in each of these situations, we have to identify. So your base should be, how will I develop a mutual interest and how will I develop trust with this other person? So then you can make networking effective. Yeah. Um, it, it's, and the other thing about networking is that we, and with the benefit of uh, technology, obviously this is becoming easier and easier. How do you, focus as much as possible, or rather as uh, feasibly possible outside your geographical location. So businesses are operating more globally now. Uh, businesses are more culturally diverse, yeah? 
Um, and chances are that your coworkers, clients, stakeholders, they work throughout the world. How can you continue to connect more and more with that people, with such people? Yeah. So I'll give an example. So in I normally have conversations with people, and let me give a, this example from uh, an employment point of view, where they are coming to uh, to just have a conversation around Chris. Uh, how do we or how do I actually develop a successful mentoring relationship? I get I look for a mentor. I reach out to them on LinkedIn. We have one session, and then soon after that relationship dies. Yeah, and the most for me, what I have observed over time, that the reason most of those relationships die in the first, in the very first uh, few stages is because as a mentee, even the one reaching out as a mentee, I have not first of all clearly outlined my goals. So I have not clearly said by the way, I'm looking for this mentorship session because I'm a, an aspiring finance, uh, finance professional and I need help to identify what are the trends that are going to happen in the next 10 years. So if you are as clear as that, then the possible mentor is, um, is even, can even prepare themselves to be able to help you more. But if uh, we are reaching out to basically say, I want to connect with you uh, because I want to know more about finance, it's not, it's not as clear as possible. And uh, because the mentor doesn't want to come to the session in most cases, feeling vague and feeling as if they are not helping you as much, then um, if there's no proper outlined agenda on what is going to happen next, then the tendency that the tendency is that that relationship might not last for too long because people they don't have, you don't have, or the mentor also doesn't have what to look forward to in the next few instances. But really the point I'm trying to make under that whole uh, point three is that never stop networking, network now, when you don't actually need, uh, when you don't actually desperately need uh, that network. All right, point four is really have to focus on your soft skills, yeah? So soft skills are critical. So, and I have seen this both ways. Uh, Grace said, I, I run a company called Workforce Africa. <clears throat> Before that, I spent we say 15 years or so in employment, um, these soft skills work both, both situations. They, they will work when you're in, you're in employment and they will definitely, I think even more critical when you're running a business, yeah? So as, and we are seeing technology moving, as technology becomes, automates most of the actions maybe in, a, in businesses, the, your greatest asset as an individual is um, your personality and your human traits, yeah? Some of these kind of traits include uh, things like problem-solving capability. Uh, I mentioned critical thinking earlier, uh, people management, collaboration, things like emotional intelligence, how do you do judgment, how do you um, handle customer service, these are skills that are really important in how we actually um, in how we actually differentiate them, differentiate ourselves, and how we create opportunities for us for ourselves. So soft skills are really critical. The um, what I also want to add on this particular point is that for these soft skills. Once you have identified the soft skill that you want to work on, there's numerous options on where uh, these training capabilities can be found. So there is um, online online platforms that are actually providing these skills, things like LinkedIn Learning, things like uh, Udemy and Coursera. So there's lots of if you go online, there's lots of um, platforms that you can actually get these skills from. So the most important thing um, is to really identify what is it, what is this particular skill that I want to develop, put a plan down, and then identify where um, identify where you get the capability to actually, uh, or you get the you get the platform to develop that particular capability. Yeah, and then the last point on this particular part is, which is also quite important, is how do you develop your personal brand. Yeah, how to develop your personal brand. 
So unknowingly or knowingly, your daily activities contribute to your personal brand. Yeah. So and the fact that we live in a crowded and competitive world, it we, we will at some point in our careers need to stand out. Yeah. So that personal brand is what helps you to stand out. Yeah. All the people that we talk about today as having had an impact on the world stood uh, and were known for something. Yeah. So it's all about what you want to be known for as an individual. Yeah. Some people even push it further and say, what is the legacy that you want to leave? Yeah. Uh, closer home, it's really more about what is even your digital footprint. Yeah. Um, so you, I'm sure there's a lot of there's lots of examples nowadays, even that we have seen on TV and social media, where people have actually lost opportunities because of the digital footprint that they have left behind. Some random post that they did years ago, and then it comes back to haunt them uh, years later. So how do you uh, manage your digital footprint, um, and how? Overally, how do you uh, curate your personal brand in a way that that personal brand is your ambassador? Yeah, so they always think of it in terms of my personal brand is my ambassador. And if, say, for instance, I'm looking for a business connection or I'm even looking for a job, if the person who I'm having a conversation with goes online to actually check um, Chris, what are they going to find? Yeah, um, or have I packaged myself in such a way that I am conscious on what I would, I know someone is going to look so proactively on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm managing it in such a way that, um, I'm managing it in such a way that if they go in there, they will find what I've curated for them to find. So yeah, I'm gonna pause there for a bit and uh, possibly take a question or two. Um, thank you very much, Chris. I think that has been quite intense. And and just um, the reason why we start we came up with this topic was because I get okay. Wait, I get inspiration every day. Anyway, so there's a friend of mine who is a lawyer who has been running a law firm for probably ten years now, and he's dead bored. Yes, and he. <laughs> He needs to figure out what what's next. What does he want to do? And then and that that's not the only person I have. An, my mentor has been running a business for twenty years, and he says in the next ten years, mm. he doesn't want to do the same thing again. So how do you yes. deal with this monotony? Yeah, it's an interesting one because you know it's a in most cases these situations of a boredom and burnout. It's their individual individual situations, yeah? Mm -hmm. So at an individual level, mm -hmm. uh, the first step is to uh, try and figure out where the monotony is coming from. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the monotony could be coming from, I have done things in a certain way for so mm -hmm. long, yeah? Yes. It could be uh, the processes that I follow are not as effective. So, and especially if you're doing something and is not yielding, as much satisfaction as you would expect or as much output as you would expect, then in most cases, you'll find that that particular, um, that particular situation is going to create burnout or is going to create a list, of, a list of, uh, of activities that are not interesting for you to do, are not motivating, and gradually that builds into, um, into boredom and burnout yeah. because you're not looking forward to those particular exercises. So what I would say is that first of all is to find out those specific activities that are leading to that are monotonous that are not productive, and then once you have picked them out, find out where this exact where these are coming from. So I used to have a, a previous friend, or I can call them a coach. Um, they used to ask me, okay, so you have to ask yourself five whys. Mm -hmm. So why am I doing this uh, right now? Yeah. If you get the answer, you follow it up with another why to a point where you actually figure out what is the root cause of this particular solution. Some people ask themselves those questions to a point of, you'll say, even deciding to shift career directions. Yes. Because possibly it is not an area that is interesting anymore 
or possibly the objective that you had initially when you're starting out, even if it is a business, that objective mm -hmm. has already been met and overtaken by events, or you generally just need to change and do something fresh. Yes. Actually, uh, on that note, I have another friend who is um, who has been running her own business, okay? And the other day she was like, Grace, me, I want to go back into employment. And what would you be your advice? Just, just out of curiosity, just mm. uh, prob totally irrelevant, maybe. Yeah, it's a, I mean, looking at the situation or mm -hmm. for that particular person, you know, yeah. I would say, to be honest, there's no blanket answer, but mm -hmm. it is not wrong to go back to employment. I think we have created this picture of uh, once you possibly get out of employment, uh, it is an area that is a no-go back zone, or maybe self-employment is actually better. But it's not all the case. It's not all times. Sometimes employment is better. Yeah. Interestingly, nowadays the way things are continuing to operate is such that you can even take a middle ground where you have maybe say doing contractual jobs. And, and still possibly running a business. So there's nothing that says that you can't go back to employment. I mean, looking at the specific situation, there is no reason why the person shouldn't be able to go back and uh, yeah, make their career out of employment again. Now, it, 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 interesting answer because um, mm -hmm. I, I think most of us who have been in employment and then transitioned to entrepreneurship, enough times we wanted to go back to employment um once once or twice if you've thought i am i should get a job it happens yeah but yeah anyway. you know it's yeah it's it's not it's not at all i, I think and this is just my chris uh, biased view um some of we possibly get out of into employment thinking that into out of into self entrepreneurship or business thinking that it's going to be easy and rosy. Yeah. But then you realize uh, being your own boss is no fun. Uh, can even be tougher than uh, being, <laughs> having someone <laughs> who we report to. So it, it, it's it kind of hits hard, yeah? And uh, the option the, the option of going back to employment, I always wanted, I always want to leave it open and on the table. Yeah, okay. it, it's just sometimes it's also because of cultural pressures or societal pressure, pressures that says kind of all this unspoken rule that mm -hmm. uh, running your own business is better. But mm -hmm. there are definitely lots of people excelling and excelling at employment. Yeah, true. And and uh, just to echo your, your remarks, I was talking to a friend of mine earlier this morning who was telling me he transitioned about a year back and he's like, gosh, you never told me the hustle is sold differently. Yes. <laughs> but 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 True. I think and it's the reason one of the reasons why we started these webinars is because uh, people have over glorified entrepreneurship and self-employment. And and sometimes they have made employment seem very evil. But it's not. It's not. It's um I think it depends on your path, the path you choose, and it works mm. both ways. I mean. Both of them, I can tell you uh, from experience, they all have their pros and cons. So yes, I think we can yes. take um, questions from the audience. And my friends, uh, those in entrepreneurship who've been considering and are wondering how to kickstart, we are doing the five whys next week. So um, an, anonymous, <laughs> an anonymous attendee is asking, what should one do to enhance job prospects if he's an employee? Yeah, um, I think the main point to enhance job prospects is capability building. So you see, at the end of the day, as an employer, I'm looking, I'm looking for skills. Yeah. And the world is consistently and gradually changing into a focus on skills. You have had all those discussions saying, okay, some companies now are not focusing on degrees anymore. They just want to know what can you do if you're given this laptop. What exactly can you do with this laptop? So yeah. I think that's the first point. Uh, really develop your skill. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is to, first of all, be really clear on which mm -hmm. goal you want to achieve. Uh, so are you, which career prospects? So which, which role do you want to achieve? How long? Um, which companies? So be as specific as possible. And once mm -hmm. you do that, 
and you have a um, you have started to now build your skill to be able to get to that level then look for people that can actually help you get there so whether it is mentors coaches friends that can assist so just consistently keep reaching out so that then once you combine the skills and now the networking uh, activities you post, most probably uh, be able to be able to land the jobs that you're aspiring mm. Excellent. I hope you've gotten that. Ah, your friend, Simon Washira. I told you I know people you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he says, would you recommend every person out there, even the happy and comfortable ones, irrespective of their age, to have a career coach? Yes. Because, you know, uh, yes, I would, I would definitely recommend uh, people to have career coaches. Uh, there's, there's no one person that has a monopoly of, uh, of knowledge and what's happening. Mm-hmm. So, and a career coach, so you can you should not necessarily restrict your career coach to just the, the central area that you're focusing on. Career coaches can be as wider and out of your geography as much as possible. Yeah. So um, I'll give you an uh, actually a real example. So I had this particular employee who used to work at a tea plantation in Kericho. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was really senior, by the way. He was um, maybe one of the site and site engineers managing over 1,000 acres of tea. But then he had this career coach from the US who they also deal with um, in plantations, yeah, in corn plantations. But the kind of um, things that he was able to do or to implement at the team plantation as a result of this career coach actually had him promoted like two levels up. Yeah, because some of the technology that he was deploying was directly out of what the career coach was instructing him or was kind of showing him to do. So there's no one who doesn't need a career coach. It's just, you just need to identify um, why do I need a career coach for? Then using that particular um, description of the kind of uh, journey you want, then choose a career coach that fits into that particular that particular skill. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for that answer. Milkangari is asking, changing careers is a huge leap, especially if you have a family and bills need to be paid. What is the way to take so that one doesn't get overwhelmed by this change? Yeah, yeah, yeah very good question. Um, maybe my response is, uh, have a plan. Have a plan. Don't, don't jump in blindly. So, Obviously, like you're saying, there's the realities of uh, how we live. We need money uh, to be able to survive. So as much as, say, for instance, the current job is not as satisfactory, there's definitely a need for a plan. So that then this plan can help you transition gradually. And the thing to do is to invest, gra- in, to invest slowly into the career change that you want. Yeah. So I have had someone coming from finance into marketing. Yeah. And basically what they do is that even when you're in finance, you are attending the, you're attending the marketing classes. Um, you're probably doing one or two, one or two jobs, even if it's over the weekend in terms of marketing, you're gradually connecting with the marketing professionals. Uh, you're attending marketing events. So you can still build your journey progressively to allow you to make a proper transition. Because also, sometimes if transitions are not managed well, and this is just a caution, it can land flat. Yeah, so if you say, for instance, leave a a certain job with the expectation that because, and I see see this often with the master's level people, so you have an undergraduate in, um, in finance, you go and do an MBA, human resources, and then now you want to become a human resource professional. Whereas now the companies that are looking for human resource professionals want someone who started with a higher diploma and is very clear on the operational aspects of the labor laws. And the person who did the master's uh, human resources probably doesn't have that granularity of uh, knowledge in that particular profession. So I, I, that's just an example of one of the instances where a career change can be tough. So the, the really the ideal situation is to make sure that 
you just uh, gradually plan it and almost stack it like stairs. So then when you get to a certain level, you know, um, with this uh, background of information or knowledge or experience and skill, then I'll probably be able to land, uh, land a job and change that particular skill. Uh, career. Excellent. Thank you very much for that answer. And um, I probably I am a living example of transition. And next week, you're going to look at the step step, uh, step by step guide to um, managing change, uh, whether in career wise, whether in life, whether in uh, uh, um, entrepreneurship, you know, so next week we are we are talking about navigating change. So we are going to be I think Milkangari, I promise that will be the first question next week so that we can get probably more clarity. And I know Chris, uh, she says, thank you for the clarity. I mean, and uh, just to remind you our audience, we still have our giveaways today and we have uh, some people walking away with some gift hampers from uh, Soil Express of Limited. We still have Wild International who are offering a scalarizer class to one of the entrepreneurs who is our listener, as uh, one of you in our audience. We also have JC, Beauty, who is giving a gift hamper. So I'm not too sure how many you'll walk away with today, but I can bet you someone will walk away with something. And now, um, as we continue, oh yeah, I was going to say that uh, for most of you don't actually know that I'm a journalist. I have a degree in journalism. <laughs> so I, I probably uh, have lived the transition phases and one day I'll tell you all about it. But uh, for now, uh, Chris, I recently mm. got a job in program uh, project management, but my background is in HR. It mm. looks very challenging, a very challenging um, assignment, and that is why I want to try it. What advice can you give? Um, challenges are good. Uh, don't shy away. You learn best uh, when you're going through a challenge. So I would advise, take it head on, um, use the opportunity to learn as much as possible. Yeah. Um, look for opportunities to stand out. Yeah, and the reason I say that is uh, when you stand out. So interestingly, you know, um, when you do challenging assignments, you're not the only one who thinks it's challenging. Other people think it's challenging as well. So if you push yourself and actually stand out, the probability of leaving a name or standing up for yourself in that particular, or showing up yourself in that particular situation is multiplied way more, yeah? So that is why I say my advice would be take it head on, use the opportunity as much as that opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. um, if there's even additional improvements that you can make, go ahead and do it. So if you say, for instance, you need to go and learn uh, new things, uh, and introduce new concepts to the team that were not being introduced, that have not been introduced before, use that opportunity to actually do it. It will, it will be a, a double multiplied mileage down the line. Yeah, yeah, very good answer. And uh, mm. that's from an, from, an, from an anonymous attendee. From Wango Motua, at times it is not even about not knowing why you are in a profession. You can love what you do, but everything mm. becomes so easy and slowly becomes boring. No challenges per se. Instead, yeah. other people come to you to help them in challenges that to, that to you are so easy. There is what yes. I am right now. I turned 40 this year. I am beginning to ask myself, is, is this it? Is yes. there more bigger challenges out there? Yeah, yeah. I think that's more of a comment. I don't know whether you have- Yeah, anything. I can actually add something to that because that is that is just the that is the initial signs that uh, is is it's becoming monotonous mm -hmm. yeah and that's and and you're losing someone is losing motivation to actually do the job mm -hmm. so and the fact that uh, you have motivation, you have caught it at this time this is the time to actually deal with it before it becomes something that um, like 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 a hole that is getting deeper and deeper so mm -hmm. Challenge yourself to identify opportunities that will be challenging, whether it is um, taking on more projects. But they know it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're in a, an organization, for instance, and that job has gotten to that level that you need to leave, it mm -hmm. basically means even asking for more opportunities, um, volunteering yourself to handle projects that you haven't handled before, 
yeah and because you can do your job so easily at this time that means you have more time to handle to take on more work or to do other interesting things that you find or sometimes it's even sometimes it's even a hobby that is outside the office that you can mm. actually take up and uh, keep yourself engaged but um figure out exactly what the plan is once you have figured out what the plan is then by all means uh, go out there and uh, use the time that you have right now to do even more impactful things mm. excellent excellent um i i have <laughs> people asking me you mean you are a journalist anyway um so <laughs> from someone else how do you transition from formal employment to consultancy it seems impossible <sighs> yeah it's a uh, it's not impossible though um it can be tough uh, <clears throat> but the the thing with consultancy is that people are buying you as an individual and are yeah. buying what you have to offer yeah so Uh, what is your proposition to your potential client mm. so before you leave out of employment what is it that really you're going to offer this person that is so unique that they should come to you yeah that's the first step yeah then mm. gradually as you as you move ahead is to figure out how will then i package my consultancy in such a way that the service that i'm, I'm offering is consistent mm-hmm. it has a value add and is able to uh, change these organizations that I'm supporting. So when, then you, once you are able to create that framework, you have an effective consultancy, uh, consultancy organization or consultancy firm. But the very first step is to figure out what exactly are, are you gonna be? Are you, what, what exactly, what is this specific value add that you will give someone, yeah, uh, as a consultant? Problem you're solving. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh so someone else is asking and Karani I'll need you to keep your answers short because the questions are many. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. Uh so I am at a crossroads. No longer interested in the job or new knowledge in my career. In fact, it annoys me. My excitement is coming from a total new field that has no guarantee of million dollar returns, but I just mm-hmm. want to feel contented. My friends think, think I am being careless and should wait for an year. I can't take it. I'm just fed up. But I'm scared of making the wrong decision. Yeah, I would I would my view take it gradually. Take it gradually. Um you remember the question we answered a few minutes ago about uh, this life is real and uh, still needs to continue as we transition. So think about that as well. So I know the passion to take on a different direction can be strong um and 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 really push you so my my thinking would be um take it gradually but build uh, the the area that you want to move in proactively so that then by the time you're making the decision whether it is in six months or that one year's time or even shorter then you're actually going into something that you probably <clears throat> even if not fully tested and tried and tested but you have attempted and you have seen what the output could be Yeah. Okay. Um I hope that answer has come and um you can look for me I can tell you I was there in 2017 or 2016. So Henry is asking, "Hi, hey, what would you advise someone who left a career in IT, tried mm-hmm. another one in logistics, but now the uh, now the new is stagnant, no career progression, mainly finance, thus leading to one questioning choices made before?" Mm. Mm. I, I if, so if I got the question correctly um I think the dilemma is changed too many times yeah so it doesn't yeah. seem like uh, now what whether the next one I'm going to make is actually the correct decision mm-hmm. so um my my response would be take a, just take some few steps back so why did you even change in the first the first place yeah so in my, you know those uh, five whys that we are asking So take a few steps back ask those questions <clears throat> are you really interested in finance are you interested in procurement uh, was it it in the first place that you actually was re- were really interested in once you answer that question the rest is just uh, stacking it so the rest is 
once you identify, once you have that particular answer, then you put a plan in place on how you're going to get there from where yeah. you are right now. Yeah. yeah. And actually a coach is a good, a good uh, place to start in such a situation. Mm -hmm. mm. True, true, true. I would also suggest you go with a coach on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, that was Henry. Joel Monique is asking, how long should I sustain my career coach? Uh, there's no definite time, as long as, as, long as possible. <clears throat> Some career coaches last years and years, yeah, 10 years, 15 years plus. Yeah, some career, there's some career coaches that last as that long, but there are also some others that are just for mentally, for when maybe, for instance, you want to change a career and they advise you and you move on. But really, the most important thing is what is the objective that you want to achieve in that particular situation. So if the objective is met within a short period of time, then well and good. But if the objective has not been met, even after a few years, then you sustain them until such a point when uh, those objectives have been met. And it's also about the level of connection. There's someone you will connect with and you will uh, keep that person for quite a significant uh, time. Grace, you're on mute. Yeah. Mm. I'm back. Um, so Caroline Ogwang is asking, what are the perks of diversi diversification vis-a-vis -vis specialization? What are they? Perks, P-E-R-K-S. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, it's, so diversification is, it gives you opportunities to move into different areas, whereas some whereas specialization can be, can be more focused yeah, but also there's an advantage of specialization because um, if you are the only neurosurgeon in town, then your career is more valued. You probably make more out of it. So specialization at the end of the day tends to, uh, tends to almost like guarantee your career. So and you, even when you look at uh, what you call consultants or people or, or people in specialized sections, these people have actually taken time, have actually split out their specific area and become experts in those in those specific area. Yeah. In my view, as a HR person, seeing it uh, and interacting with people for a while and careers, specialization in the long run tends to pay, mm -hmm. or it's actually a better option than being so than being wider. Okay, I hope Caroline, you've gotten uh, Karani's view on that. So there's another anonymous attendee who is asking, there is a new position created in my workplace. The management has decided that my colleague and I should do a test to compete for it. I am not really interested in that role. Would it reflect badly on me if I decline to compete for the new role and just continue with the, my current position? The grade and pay are the same as the one I am in now, just different roles and change of title. Yeah, if you're not interested in it, don't participate. There's no need yeah. of doing it for ticking a box. So if you're not interested, and the best way to, so that you don't also spoil the relationship, because I'm sure that's, a, that's an important part, have a sit down uh, with the hiring manager or the boss in this case, and explain to them the reason for your choice. So, and the good thing to go with in such a session is what is your career plan? And you can explain to them, as far as my career plan is concerned, I don't this, I don't see this particular role helping me in that journey, and therefore, I will skip this opportunity. Yeah, I, I think uh, you can do that with the soft skills that Karani is talking about. So Karani gave us a few highlights on how to unstuck or uh, stop getting bored uh, and, and probably move yourself to the next level. He said that we have to have lifelong learning. And uh, this one, he said we need to do to understand you yourself as a person so you need to understand your personality you need to keep learning for a particular goal you need to decide i am transitioning into hr what do do i need to become an hr so you need to plan your training such that uh you get to achieve that goal and then plug in technology i mean what are the technology uh requirements uh that are needed for your for whatever it is you're transitioning into. And for those in, in uh, entrepreneurship, how can you innovate? How can you create more 
I mean, uh, different new ways of doing things so that then you stop getting bored and you have something new to look forward to. And I know that because of money, uh, we tend to feel stuck. But I mean, um, that's why he went back into employment to solve a particular need. And then he talked about networking. And this one, you have to find a mentor. At least uh, you define the uh, goals for your mentorship. You also network, not when you need them urgently, but when uh, just, you know. And then uh, invest in soft skills, your EQ, your collaboration, ETC, and then your personal brand. And this one, he was very specific about uh, your digital footprint. I hope I've done a good summary, Karani. And uh, I don't know if I've left anything out. Uh, for your whatever it is you're taking away with you, you can actually start sharing on the chat. However, now we can get to, okay, someone is asking, can we get the recordings, please? Yes, the recordings will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, Atara Solutions. Kindly subscribe and leave a comment. You can catch up on the others right there. Uh, so that you're able to catch up and probably sit quietly and listen to this when you're not being rushed. So our winner of the day is one Jacinta Kisungi. Jacinta Kisungi was the last person to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So Jacinta Kisungi, you get to walk away with a gift hamper from um, Soilex Prosov Limited. Now, um, let me just go random. Anyone who wants another gift hamper from Soilex? Uh, I mean, um, by a show of hands, and we will get it. So, uh, lift up your hands for the person who wants this. Eric, I hope you can follow. I, I sometimes I miss the hands, eh? so that then someone else gets to walk away. So next week, one of uh, the lucky entrepreneurs will get a chance to walk away with a Scalarizer sponsorship class. This you cannot miss. So we have Christine. Christine. Christine, I don't know which Christine this one is. Please get in touch with me. Uh, my number is 0721 Kindly get in touch with me so that we can organize how you can get this. Yourself and Jacinta, you're the lucky winners of today. You get to walk away with a pack from Soilex Prosov Limited. So next week, we are doing two giveaways. We have JC uh, Beauty and we have Wild International Scalarizer Class. One will be for an entrepreneur and the other one will be for anyone um, who gets to answer the questions right. So um, thank you very much, Karani. I don't know whether I have um, missed out on any question. Um, <laughs> Natalie is already saying, I won't like a hamper from JC. Well, tune in next week and that is when you can get a chance to walk away with a gift hamper. And uh, it's now 8.59 p.m. And thank you very much, Karani. This informative discussion is brought to you by Atara Solutions, a HR and uh, consulting and training firm in partnership with the Lego Academy, a, a software development and capacity building academy. This has been quite insightful and we hope to kickstart your career. If you're wondering how the change is going to happen, kindly join us next Tuesday, uh, next Tuesday, same time, same place as we discuss navigating change. We have to discuss how, because we are going through a lot of changes and we need to know how to strategically uh, navigate the changes. Thank you very much, Chris um, or Karani. That was very, very in, uh, insightful. Thank you, team uh, Workforce Africa. We have really learned. Uh, thank yeah. you, Zalego Academy, our IT partners. Thank you, Serenity Studios. Our partners, uh, Balcon Housing, Good Fortune Greens, JC Beauty, Wild International, Pal Radio, Sorel Laundry, Sanus Kitchen, Career Management Center, and Shushi Naturals for your support on the giveaways. Uh, special thanks to Mr. Simon Washira of Think Out Limited, a strategy and communications company. Alex Mwangi, our legal expert. Thank you very much, our audience, for tuning in tonight. It's always a pleasure. Do not forget to tune in to PAL Radio 96.9 FM in Nairobi. Again, PAL Radio 96.9 FM in Nairobi. My name is Grace Ndula. I have been your host. I am a trainer and HR consultant with Atara Solutions. Please like our Facebook page, uh, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Atara Solutions. And uh, see you next week, same time, same place, as we look at navigating change. Karani has given us tools to, uh, I mean, kickstart our careers and our businesses. So how do we get to do this? Thank you very much, Karani. Thank you, our audience. And from all of us, it's good night. 
Charity, Catherine, please get in touch with me. You need to collect your gift. And then we have Christine. I don't know which Christine this one is. So, Christine, thank you very much. And get in touch. Uh, she says she'll be in touch. Jacinta Kisungi, please also get in touch with me. And we shall keep learning.